It's known as the Millionaire's Factory. Such are the reputed riches of many of Macquarie's key executives. And this is the man who's created much of that wealth in the battle to extend the bank's global reach and international growth in recent years. Chief Executive Alan Moss. Our basic approach is to provide an environment which is conducive to entrepreneurial activity within a strong risk management framework. The philosophy has clearly worked. Macquarie's latest half-yearly results showed a record 351 million US dollar profit, 88% up on the previous corresponding period. And it continues to gobble up assets across the globe as its business model of fee-generating managed funds continues to produce attractive results. The bank has listed funds on exchanges from Sydney to New York, from Singapore to Seoul. But right now, the focus is very much on Asia. Asia has the largest number of staff internationally. Uh, we have over a thousand staff in Asia as compared to about 500 staff in each of North America and Europe. So Asia is really the centre of the action for Macquarie Bank. For my guest, it's probably been one of the most challenging periods of his career. Today, Jeff Dixon, Chief Executive of Qantas, shares his thoughts on the troubled industry and looks to the future of Australia's national carrier. What does Qantas really have to do to survive in an increasingly competitive market? Uh, be very good at what we do, and that is to get your costs right, your productivity up to the world's best practice, have a very, very good product, and then I think there's some essentials that are necessary in the airline market, which is scale, network, uh, frequent flyer, things like that. There's a range of things, but certainly you have to look after your customer, number one, and you must have productivity and a lot of airlines have trouble with productivity. Given that so many factors are out of your control though, I mean, have the halcyon days of the airline industry been and gone? <laughs> I'm not sure there were any halcyon days of the airline industry, uh, but uh, no, not necessarily. I think as long as people realise that it is a cyclical industry and at times there'll be uh, the, ec the economies of the world will improve, um, There'll be a lot more travel and I think you'll probably find that airlines who have restructured during the period of the downturn will probably do very, very well. One of the things that I think uh, makes us uh, uh, perhaps a, a little unique among, among banks is that we go out and we take our entire executive team out twice a year to talk directly in sort of town hall meetings to the major people leaders and managers in small groups of about 40 for half a day each to understand what's really going on out there in the business and what roadblocks are really getting in the way of them delivering uh, a superior customer experience and we say to them look everybody in this company reports to someone sitting at this sitting in this horseshoe here so there should be no problem we can't solve but the more I see of business, the more I realise most, most businesses are pretty tough in their own unique way. Um, in, in transport and logistics, I think um, being able to offer a customer something different, that point of differentiation is essential. If you're just one of the same, uh, then you're going to struggle to succeed. I think our view has always been that we were going to build our model around uh, the, the integrated solution and then uh, we would push that very hard. Um, but at the end of the day, service levels and, and a customer focus are extremely important. And since being a public company, we've spent a huge amount of time making ourselves accessible to uh, our shareholders. And so we, we are very transparent there. We work hard to do that. And I think that combination, that formula has worked well. It's been a stellar rise for Gail Kelly, who held a senior post at the Commonwealth Bank before taking the helm at St George. A former Latin and history teacher in her native South Africa, she combines her present role with the demands of bringing up four children, including triplets. Uh, no wonder she appears so organised. Her intense, no-nonsense approach to work is reflected in her language style when she talks of clean, crisp and quality results. Even those at the back of the class are compelled to listen. Our whole philosophy and, and strategy in running our business is very much one of building to last, building for the long run, avoiding short termism in the business and avoiding the hockey stick type effect. So what that means is we consistently and systematically invest in the business. So managing our growth, balancing our growth with the investment required. 
and we can see where the growth opportunities lie within our business. They lie within our existing customer base, and they lie with the excellent product uh, uh, capabilities that we have in doing more business uh, with the capabilities that we have in geographies where we've traditionally been underweight. So we see a steady uh, maintenance of superior earnings quality over a period. We've seen your share price uh, increase in value in the past couple of years. What, in your opinion, is the potential for further improvements in this area? Well, I think at the end of the day, if we keep performing and, and we are consistent uh, in, in, in uh, the way we talk about our business and then, of course, consistent in our delivery, uh, I think our share price will continue to perform. Beneath the dense jungle of this remote and inhospitable terrain, there are billions of dollars to be made. Mining is big business in PNG, and oil search is one of the largest operators, extracting gold, gas and oil from its plants deep in the southern highlands of this mineral-rich nation. The man charged with maximizing the potential of this valuable resource is Peter Botton, managing director of oil search, which recently merged with fellow PNG operator Origin Minerals. Today he presides over a company with a market cap of 1.4 billion Australian dollars. We really believe the two companies together forms a very powerful, potent uh, new force in the oil and gas business. Why exactly did you decide to merge? Uh, there were a range of reasons. Um, firstly, uh, the investment in Papua New Guinea overall over the last three years, three or four years uh, in the oil and gas business has not been enough for us to really predictably grow our business, which has been a disappointment to us and our shareholders. Um, clearly, we have uh, an equity and a, a reasonable equity in, the, uh, in those fields, but not enough to really provide control and influence to give us a predictable growth program and strategy. I would say Telstra today is better positioned, more confident and more uh, assured in its decision making than it has been for some time. Do you ever lie awake at night worrying about whether you've uh, made the right decision? No, no I don't. I happily I'm surrounded by very capable people and I would say one of the things that I feel best about the last few years is the quality of the Telstra executive team because they are made up, that team is made up of some you know, genuinely superior executives. Between us and the very uh, robust processes that we have to, to get to decisions, uh, we make, I think, decisions that have integrity. Now, do we get everything right? Demonstrably not. But uh, do we feel like uh, we, we, our process are, processes are appropriate? Absolutely. And I feel very, very uh, confident by that. And you're paid pretty well for the job, aren't you? You earn a base salary of 1.45 million Australian dollars a year. Uh, you could earn a potential 7 million a year by meeting certain performance hurdles. Uh, are you really worth 7 million? Look, uh, let me tell you, uh, I think that $7 million figure out there has turned out to be unhelpful because it's very, very theoretical and highly improbable. But if I were ever to be paid anything like that, I think there would be no doubt that I was worth it because of the heroic achievements that the company would have delivered to get there. And that was the chief executive of Telstra, Ziggy Smitkowski, who holds sway over one of the world's leading telcos from its headquarters here in Melbourne. I'm Roger Maynard. Join me next week when I'll be talking to other corporate leaders about their job and what it takes to be successful in CEO Australia. <laughs>